Hey all, Bill Bachman here with another blog slash lesson thing for drumworkout.com. Brought to you with some help by my friends at Vic Firth, which is fantastic. This one is going to be on stick heights and velocity. So, it's going to be a bit of a deep thought. Put your thinking hat on. Cap. Sure, sure. Um, so, we're going to get deep, but it's going to make a big difference in how you play. Stick heights. Some people love stick heights and they live and die by them. Now the problem is, stick heights can be completely false. Right? So I had tension in my hand where I was basically playing my hand instead of the drum. Right? You get this effect. Right? Crescendo, decrescendo from the same exact stick height, basically by adjusting how much velocity or speed of stroke went into the drum versus went into the palm of my hand. Okay, the palm, I call it the brakes, right? You don't want to play on the brakes, right? Don't play the hand, play the drum, okay? So when you're looser, that's what's going to go on. Now, some people are very anti-stick heights, like they're just Neanderthal, bad, terrible, unmusical thing, okay? I think that's kind of foolish because they're incredibly useful and good. Now, if you're thinking about stick heights when you're performing, then it probably sounds like you're thinking about stick heights while you're performing. Not good, right? You get that squareness happening. So ultimately, you want to use your ears and blend, but once everybody's sort of playing the same velocity, or just you personally playing a healthy, smart, flowing velocity, slash stick height and stick height, next thing you know, you sound great. You sound really musical and really, really natural. All right? One of my overarching concepts is I'm inherently flawed. So the more of me that affects that stroke, the more weird things are going to happen. Now, nature is perfect and constant. So the more of nature, the more consistency, flow, consistency and flow and groove and musicality I'm going to have, right? So that, as I'm barely holding the stick, that wants to go evenly, whereas this, every tiny little manipulation I do can come out prone to an error into the drum, okay? So that's the whole looseness thing. All right, now, if you've been to drumworkout.com and you kind of know my shtick, you know I'm a huge fan of the free stroke, where it just rebounds up naturally, right? So at that point, you're not hitting the drum, you're letting the stick hit the drum, all right? There's way more detail on this on the site and in the stick technique too, if you want to check that out. But without getting way into that, let's look at a crescendo and decrescendo the smart way. Earlier I did the that kind of thing, but now let's do it the right way using stick heights where it's based on the velocity of the stroke. So here we go. So the only thing that happened is the stick went faster in the same amount of time, right? Now the sound you get is primarily the force of the stroke and force is mass times velocity squared. So velocity or speed of the stroke is the way bigger thing. You might think, oh, well, a big guy can play with so much sound. No, you give me a little scrawny person and they can make a bigger sound. It's all about physics and that stroke speed. Okay, so again, it's because of the stick heights changing the speed of the strokes. That's what's gonna make your, your things do well. Musical sound, dynamics, and once you know that, then, Suddenly, you can play really expressively and really loosely all the time as everything relates right back to that free stroke. So from there, the next step is to get your right hand and left hand to match not only stick heights but match velocities. If they can play identically together, then they can alternate or interleave nice and evenly and correctly. Okay, so food for thought. If you want to teach somebody who doesn't play drums how to play a flam, all you do is you put one hand there and the other hand here and say hit him at the same time. Okay? When you're playing double stops, 99% of the time any flam is occurring because one stick is lower. The lower stick hits first. Okay? So ultimately you want to be able to play every single one hand exercise as double stops. So one hand your exercises, for instance, you have the stock eight on a hand. 
right? If your hands are operating the same, you should be able to do, what I like to do is right, both, left, both. So you'd have, right? So that's an example of one-hander with eight on a hand. Another one-hander exercise is double beat. So some form of one, two, three, four. Right? If the alley-oop wrist and finger ratios is matching and the velocity of the first and second strokes is matching, you'll be able to play that with no flams from the same stick heights. And at that point, a lot of things are going to work better. All right, another really typical single hand exercise is triple beat. Incredibly similar to what we just did. Right, there you go. Now accent tap, here's where your downstroke thing kicks in. So if you're playing, let's say sets of four. Now let's match it here. See those stick heights? They're nice and symmetrical and the velocity from that stick height is matching on both hands. Right? Otherwise, I would not be able to play double stops. And I can interleave those. Right? That's actually some of the, in stick technique, the accents and taps. Ah! What's it called? What's it called? Added and integrated. That's it, right? I know these things. I wrote it. Okay, so that's in there, a good one to check out. If you look at some other really crucial hand motions, you have the hut kadik, hut kadik. This is gonna be your para everything. Para diddle, para diddle diddle, para diddle diddle diddle, 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 etc. Or the hut dig a dick, hut dig a dick, hut dig a Uh oh, see it? Little foul tip there. If your hands match, you'll be able to get those double stops, right? So pay real close attention, watching your stick heights, right? Eyes on the beads when you're practicing and make your hands match perfectly and make sure you're playing the same technique in both hands and the same velocity. When you get that going on, your hands will be really, really well balanced. They'll play really musically and relaxed, really evenly, and then they'll make a huge difference in your playing, all right? So get off the brakes on all that free stroke stuff. Really check out the vo that velocity. All right, that's it. Go practice.